Ta sesja prezentacji Best of Poland jest poświęcona cyfrowym opowieściom. Narzędzia cyfrowe wspomagają opowiadanie najróżniejszych historii, a projekty, które tu pokażemy, dobrze oddają tę różnorodność. Comixify AI rozwija technologię opartą o AI, która wspiera postprodukcję obrazów wideo. TNCBH 2017-18 to kontemplacyjny, wirtualny spacer wokół miejsca, w którym Kiedyś stała zburzona w czasie II wojny światowej synagoga. Storycopter to aplikacja, która pozwala dziennikarzom na tworzenie zajmujących opowieści dostępnych w sieci. Niestety jej twórca Piotr Fedorczyk nie mógł dzisiaj być z nami, ale jego projekt zobaczą Państwo na stronie internetowej festiwalu w zakładce Best of Poland. Zobaczymy też Stargaze, grę VR, w której gracze odkrywają wszechświat złożony z maleńkich planet i projekt Kronika, w ramach którego powstaje infrastruktura służąca do przechowywania i udostępniania cyfrowych zasobów nauki i kultury. W czasie prezentacji można zadawać twórcom pytania na czacie, a potem zapraszamy na sesję Q&A. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Bolesław Michalski, and I'm proud to present Comixify today. Comixify, we're in Comixify, we're using proprietary algorithms. We developed uh, products that can use artificial intelligence in business. Our demo installation got more than 230,000 users and 100,000 comics. How it works? It's quite simple. The relevant frames are selected from any given movies. Then we use method of popularity and uh, quality estimation to choose the best frame. And at the end, we just change them in the cartoon. Propriety machine algorithms that we own can transfer style of any video that we will present them. Simply, our AI is looking at the video and then generate the style. But moreover, it can also use the hand-drawn images to create the, any style that you want. With 100 images, we can create everything and any, any, any given style that is there. Busy second year, 2020 development. Our dust that year was super busy. We just simply launched the beta test of our SaaS online platform, where you can use style transfer that change the original image into the image that uh, you choose from the created style. The style might be developed with us, or the style might be simply developed by looking at existing images. Also, what we're doing, and it's super important from video post-production, is rotoscopy, where our platform, once given a video and a proper mask that can be also drawn into the images, can simply focus on choosing this particular selected image and then follow up with video. How it works? You simply choose the video, you choose the image, then you choose the mask that can be uploaded or that can be drawn into our platform. And once it's all done and proper files are being selected and tuned up, our software will render your mask and then in minutes we'll just simply choose the selected, selected part and go with it. And last but not least is super slow motion where we can apply our tech to add missing frames 
to slow motion videos. Imagine that you want to have the video slowed down to get more details, but the amount of frames is not enough. Then our AI can simply add them in. Future is brave. 2021 is the next year of full development we're planning. In this year, we're planning to do the video in painting that will not only select the uh, images, but it will also help to disappear the fragments that people want to remove from any video or any files they will give us. It's super important from post-production perspective. And another product is super resolution, where we can simply use artificial intelligence to enhance the image and change it from very low, resol low resolution to high resolution material in minutes. That can be used for uh, many post-production actions that can be used for enhancing the old materials, that can be used to get old, very old images and bring them back to life, or simply by regular users that have the images from their summer holidays and they want to have them better. Our team is composed of top specialists and amazing advisors, and we continuously develop our AI to get uh, to do more and to do better. It was my pleasure to present Comixify. Basically, what we do in Comixify, we use artificial intelligence to create business products that can be used in video post-production, in post-production of images, and in many other forms, from semi-professionals, amateurs, to super-professional post-production studios. We are very happy to develop the product as fast as we can, and we are also proud to present more and more tools into our product. We also think about developing plugins to video post-production software directly, but software as a service platform now gives an ability to use 24-7 services whenever you need them. Simply, you can upload your video, change its style, rotoscopy, use rotoscopy to cut selected images or selected parts of the video, or use super slow motion to enhance your video and to give uh, more of a slow-mo material to be more readable and not jump like crazy. So our tools are there. Our tools are super easy to use, and we're proud to present them to you today. Thank you for listening to me, and I will be more than happy to take any of your questions in the Q&A session that will start in minutes. Dzień dobry Państwu, Małgorzata Uczyna. Jacek Złoczowski. Jako artyści współpracujemy od ponad 10 lat, natomiast w 2017 roku stworzyliśmy kolektyw Memory Morph, w którym interesuje nas przede wszystkim interpretacja architektury, przestrzeni miejskiej, eksplorowanie różnych technik i mediów, a także działanie na styku przestrzeni realnej i wirtualnej. Dziś chcemy zaprezentować Państwu projekt zrealizowany podczas wystawy Tanceba w Galerii Bielskiej BWA w Bielsku Białej. Zarówno projekt, jak i sama wystawa inspirowane są kontekstem historycznym miejsca, w którym znajduje się Bielska Galeria, a konkretnie faktem, iż do czasów II wojny światowej stała w tym miejscu synagoga ufundowana przez społeczność postępowych bielskich Żydów. Synagoga ta została zniszczona w w 1939 roku przez nazistów, a w latach 90. na jej gruzach postawiono gmach y, aktualnie istniejącej galerii. Zarówno tytuł wystawy Tanceba, jak i tytuł projektu TNCBH mają to samo źródło. Jest nim żydowska inskrypcja nagrobna, którą można przetłumaczyć jako niech jego jej y, dusza będzie zachowana w pamięci żyjących. Wykorzystaliśmy tę inskrypcję jako inspirację do stworzenia cyklu prac wraz z innymi artystami podczas tej wystawy, które byłyby taką reinterpretacją zarówno tego miejsca z jego histori historyczną i kulturowym takim kontekstem, jak i samej, samego znaczenia tej inskrypcji. 
I w projekcie ten CBH zależało nam na skonfrontowaniu historycznego i współczesnego wizerunku tego miejsca. Przy czym nie chodziło tutaj o prosty zabieg zastąpienia jednego budynku drugim, a raczej na stworzeniu czegoś w rodzaju starcia dwóch architektonicznych porządków. I użyliśmy w tym celu techniki morfowania czy morfingu, która stosowana jest do wizualnego efektu płynnego przejścia jednego kształtu w drugi. I do tego potrzebowaliśmy dwa modele 3D dwóch budynków, synagogi i galerii. I budynek galerii udało się zeskanować w 3D stosunkowo łatwo przy pomocy techniki fotogrametrii. Udało się uzyskać skan o dosyć dobrym odwzorowaniu kształtu tego budynku. Natomiast większym wyzwaniem było uzyskanie skanu 3D synagogi. No, jak zeskanować synagogę, która została zniszczona w 1939 roku przez nazistów? Okazało się, że odpowiedź na to pytanie brzmi, należy udać się na Węgry. Dlatego, że jak się dowiedzieliśmy, pierwowzorem bielskiej synagogi była już istniejąca wcześniej synagoga w węgierskim mieście Sambatel, która szczęśliwie zachowała się do naszych czasów. Udaliśmy się więc do tego miasta, odnaleźliśmy budynek synagogi, który obecnie nie pełni już swojej dawnej sakralnej funkcji, został przekształcony na salę koncertową, ale na szczęście jego zewnętrzna forma pozostała do dzisiaj niezmieniona. No i dzięki temu udało się również zeskanować ten budynek przy pomocy techniki fotogrametrii i Mając obydwie bryły, obydwa modele 3D, mogliśmy użyć w techniki morfingu. Przy czym technicznie rzecz biorąc, aby uzyskać płynny efekt przejścia jednego kształtu w drugi, obydwa kształty muszą być w jakiś sposób do siebie podobne. Natomiast my celowo użyliśmy dwóch w ogóle nieprzystających do siebie brył. O różnym kształcie, charakterze modele 3D posiadały całkiem inną topologię, więc zamiast płynnego przejścia powstało coś w rodzaju konfliktu, takiego starcia dwóch brył, gdzie jedna była niszczy w zasadzie drugą. No, i ten efekt, który celowo udało nam się uzyskać, postanowiliśmy, zaczęliśmy się zastanawiać, w jaki sposób pokazać i zaprezentować tą pracę. I najlepiej jeszcze w jaki sposób umieścić tą pracę w tym miejscu, w którym obecnie stoi Galeria Bielska BWA. Oczywiście fizycznie nie było to możliwe, dlatego postanowiliśmy użyć przestrzeni elektronicznej i wykorzystaliśmy do tego platformę Google Street View i dzięki współpracy z programistą powstał algorytm, który pozwolił nam na pobieranie oryginalnych panoram z tej aplikacji i umieszczenie ich w przetworzonej przez nas wersji na naszej stronie internetowej, tro tworząc troszeczkę naszą wersję tej przestrzeni w, w tej platformie. Dzięki temu odbiorca poruszając się wirtualnie w ulicami wokół galerii może doświadczać kolejnych etapów dekonstrukcji bryły i zderzenia się tych dwóch porządków architektonicznych no i tych dwóch wzorców kulturowych, które istniały i lub istnieją w tym miejscu. Ostatnim etapem i takim podsumowaniem tego projektu było wygenerowanie kodu QR kierującego do tej właśnie strony, a następnie odtworzenie go w formie muralu na dachu Bielskiej Galerii. Takie działanie pozwoliło nam na dotarcie do szerszej grupy odbiorców, to znaczy poprzez mapy satelitarne Google mogą na ten projekt, na ten znak, symbol, który gdzieś znajduje się na dachu galerii, trafić także przypadkowi użytkownicy map satelitarnych Google. Ten mural na dachu galerii jest formą takiej streetartowej tablicy pamiątkowej dla historii tego miejsca. Wprawdzie nie jest on widoczny z perspektywy ulicy, tak, dla przechodnia, natomiast dzięki łączom internetowym zyskuje on dużo szerszy kontekst i dużo większy zasięg, ponieważ no, może być praktycznie obejrzany, czy choćby przypadkowo napotkany przez użytkowników na całym świecie. W tym momencie jeszcze rozdzielczość i jakość map, tych, tych fotografii, tych map satelitarnych nie pozwala na zeskanowanie kodu bezpośrednio z, z ekranu. Jest jednak możliwe, że w przyszłości jakość tych map się poprawi i będzie możliwe dla użytkowników zeskanowanie tego kodu bezpośrednio z ekranu swojego komputera, a co za tym idzie obejrzenie pracy, a w dalszej kolejności też poznanie historii tego miejsca. Dziękujemy bardzo i zapraszamy do zadawania pytań. Thank <laughs> you.
Dzień dobry Państwu, ja nazywam się Rafał Basaj, a towarzyszy mi dziś Igor Hardy. Dzień dobry Państwu. Razem stanowimy część zespołu Played With Fire. Jest to krakowski deweloper gier wideo skupiony na tworzeniu gier w wirtualnej rzeczywistości. Naszym celem jest tworzenie fantastycznych, imersyjnych światów stylizowanych na ilustracje książkowe, tudzież baśniowe, bajkowe. I taki też jest Stargate, który dziś Państwu przedstawimy. Zapraszam na gameplay. Stargaze to kosmiczna baśń inspirowana Małym Księciem. W grze wcielamy się w naukowca badającego odległe planety za pomocą fantastycznego teleskopu, który zarówno widzi, jak i pozwala na więcej niż przyrządy znane nam z rzeczywistego świata. Jako, że jest to gra dedykowana wirtualnej rzeczywistości, to operację teleskopu grasz będzie wykonywać fizycznie, używając licznych dźwigni, przycisków i przekładni. Do jego dyspozycji oddajemy też aparat fotograficzny umożliwiający uwiecznianie rzadkich zjawisk. Jak również księgę badań, w której gracz będzie uzupełniać swoje odkrycia. Stargaze opiera swą rozgrywkę o manipulację kątami widzenia teleskopu. Naginając zasady perspektywy wpływamy na odległe o lata świetlne planety, zbliżając i łącząc ze sobą widziane z daleka obiekty. Pomagamy w ten sposób dostrzeżonym istotom w ich problemach, a nawet przywracamy do życia całe ekosystemy, dając ich mieszkańcom nadzieję na lepszą przyszłość. W przedstawionym fragmencie rozgrywki osią fabularną jest istota przypominająca zwyczajnego lisa, która obudziła się po kilkusetletniej drzemce. Ognista planeta lisa jest mocno zaniedbana. Pomożemy mu więc zapanować nad zaistniałą sytuacją i przywrócić wulkaniczny dom do porządku. Przy okazji odkrywając parę fantastycznych zagadek i tajemnic naszego baśniowego kosmosu. Świat Stargate skrywa wiele tajemnic i każda z obserwowanych planet takowe kryje. Łączy też je większa kosmiczna zagadka, której poznanie spocznie oczywiście w rękach gracza. Mały książę Antoine de Saint-Exupéry jest dziełem poświęconym dziecięcej fantazji. Jako taki przedstawia przeróżne fantastyczne małe planetki, na których dzieją się niesamowite magiczne wydarzenia. Natomiast dodaje też do tego porządną dozę melancholii. Postacie, które zamieszkują te planetki, borykają się ze zwyczaj, zwyczajnymi przyziemnymi problemami, takimi z jakimi my się borykamy i stanowią archetypy różnych problemów współczesnego świata. I choć od tych problemów nigdy tak naprawdę nie uciekniemy, to rolą Stargate, naszym zamysłem w tworzeniu tej gry, było właśnie pobudzenie takiej ludzkiej wyobraźni. Robimy to w różny sposób w tej grze, natomiast Celem głównym właśnie jest założeniem, że ta nasza wyobraźnia, to, że możemy tworzyć naprawdę cudowne rzeczy poprzez proste czynności, pomagać ludziom, a nawet czasami ratować pełne ekosystemy w naszej grze, to jest te, to clue całej naszej produkcji. Co więcej, tak jakby w czasach napięć społecznych, gospodarczych, Ludzie żyją po prostu w strachu i tak jakby nie jest to już przekora, tylko tak jakby żyjemy w czasach, gdzie się przygotowujemy po prostu do najgorszego. Czym przeciwwagą właśnie jest Stargaze? Chcielibyśmy właśnie, żeby Stargaze zasiał w graczach takie małe ziarenko fantazji, które pozwoli im znaleźć źródła optymizmu w różnych małych rzeczach, patrząc w przyszłość. Dziękujemy bardzo za uwagę. Zapraszamy na zadawanie pytań na czacie. Niedługo do Państwa wracamy, a w międzyczasie zapraszamy na obejrzenie naszego zwiastuna.
Dzień dobry Państwu. Nazywam się Grzegorz Zajączkowski i pełnię zaszczytną rolę lidera cyfryzacji Komisji Europejskiej na Polskę oraz eksperta, eksperta projektu Kronika, projektu realizowanego wcześniej przez Ministerstwo Cyfryzacji, aktualnie przez Kancelarię Prezesa Rady Ministrów. Mam w imieniu, mam zaszczyt w imieniu całego zespołu projektu Kronika zaprezentować Państwu postępy w pracach tego projektu. Projekt Kronika powstał trzy lata temu. Projekt na początku jako idea polityki cyfrowej, czyli projektu, który, czyli idea, która pozwoliła skonstruować wiele repozytoriów cyfrowych w ten sposób, żeby można było importować z niego dane. Mówię tu na przykład o projekcie, o projekcie Biblioteki Narodowej Polona. Mówię tu o projekcie Szukaj Archiwach Narodowego Archiwum Państwowego ale także projektów telewizji polskiej, projektów digitalizacji i rekonstrukcji filmowej seriali, ale także jeszcze wielu, wielu innych jednostek. Dzisiaj mam w imieniu właśnie tego naszego bardzo szerokiego zespołu zaprezentować Państwu pierwsze spojrzenie na portal Kronika, portal publiczny projektu, który właśnie ma świadczyć usługi zarówno dla tych instytucji, ale także ułatwiać w dostępie do, do tych zasobów dla zwykłych obywateli. Portal Kronika jest projektem, który integruje dwa typy zasobów. Projekty kultury cyfrowej, dziedzictwa cyfrowego, czyli zdigitalizowanego, realnego naszego dziedzictwa narodowego, ale także dane projektów naukowych, takie, takie dane, które właśnie zostały sfinansowane w ramach między innymi projektów Polski Cyfrowej. Mówię tu o danych na przykład, danych DNA biobanków, danych, danych obrazowych, różnych badań, na przykład kosmicznych, zdjęcia głębokiego kosmosu. Te wszystkie dane staną się dostępne dla Państwa w ramach jednego portalu. Projekt, port, projekt Portal Kronika nie zastępuje tych pojedynczych i bardzo istotnych repozytoriów, lecz stanowi ułatwienie dostępu. Po raz pierwszy z historii te wszystkie dane będą możliwe do wyszukiwania w ramach jednej wyszukiwarki właśnie tego portalu, ale także w ramach działania całego portalu gov.pl, jednego w tej chwili najważniejszych i najbardziej istotnych portali, zwłaszcza w czasie pandemii. Portal ten znajduje się w top 10 odwiedzalności, czyli znacznie zwiększy się dzięki temu dostęp do danych właśnie kultury i nauki dla, szerokiego, dla wszystkich obywateli. Na ekranie, proszę Państwa, widzimy pierwszy, pierwszy ten moment, kiedy wchodzimy do portalu Kronika. Widzimy podział na różnego typu zasoby, różnego typu materiały. Widzimy tu pomiędzy od, te, widzimy to jednocześnie wyniki badań naukowych, zbiorów muzealnych, multimediów czy danych o zabytkach. Każdy obiekt portalu Kronika ma swoje, swoje cechy. Widzimy to oczywiście, że to może być wywiad, może być to taśma filmowa, może być to film wideo, może być to zespół danych. Każdy zespół danych jest opisany różnymi typami metadanych. Metadane umożliwiają znacznie lepsze wyszukiwanie tych, tych informacji w danym portalu, ponieważ portal wie, że jeżeli napiszemy Jan Matejko, to nie tylko chodzi o informacje o Janie Matejki, ale także chodzi o na przykład znalezienie jego obrazów, czy znalezienie najbardziej popularnych dzieł, czyli na przykład Bitwy pod Grunwaldem, które jest dostępne w nowo otwartym kilka dni temu repozytorium cyfrowym Muzeum Narodowego w Warszawie. Podział, portal zawiera bardzo wiele kategorii. W górnej części portalu widzimy ponad w tej chwili chyba 15 różnych kategorii. W każdej kategorii jest ponad 15 różnych podkategorii i ta ilość tych rzeczy będzie się stopniowo cały czas zwiększać. Wraz z importem różnego typu zasobów do portalu, portal będzie optymalizować i ułatwiać UX-owy dostęp do tych zasobów. Kolejnym bardzo ważną cechą tego portalu jest integracja z wielkimi bibliotekami globalnymi. Myślę tutaj na przykład o bibliotekach działających w standardzie AAAF, który był między innymi w tamtym roku dostępny na Festiwalu Kultury Cyfrowe. Dzięki temu portal Kronika będzie pewnym istotnym węzłem dostępu do danych polskich instytucji kultury, ale także kolekcji, polskich kolekcji prywatnych lub malutkich muzeów w całej wielkiej sieci międzynarodowej dziedzictwa cyfrowego i humanistyki cyfrowej. Portal Kronika będzie posiadać swoje własne konto, które docelowo będziemy wykorzystywać logowanie za, tak, za pomocą tak zwanego profilu zaufanego. Oznacza to, że żeby mieć konto w portalu nie musimy zakładać specjalnych jakichś tam dodatkowych haseł i tak dalej. Możemy wykorzystać na przykład logowanie z naszego banku czy logowanie od ubezpieczyciela docelowo poprzez węzeł krajowy. Dzięki istnieniu konta możemy świadczyć bardzo wiele istotnych usług. Na przykład usługą, którą na pewno jest istotą dla każdego badacza czy poszukiwacza danych jest swoja własna prywatna biblioteka. 
Wielkim zaletą projektu Kronika jest to, że kolekcje projektu będą zawierały spis obiektów z bardzo wielu instytucji. Oznacza to, że na przykład, jeżeli będziemy szukać dziedzictwa Barei, będziemy widzieli w jednym spisie jednocześnie jego seriale dostępne, tutaj myślę na przykład z Miennicy, czy Alternatywy 4 dostępne na portalu wot.tv.pl, ale jednocześnie możemy szukać informacji, ciekawej informacji o życiu Barei, łącznie z jego zdjęciami na portalu Szukaj w archiwach ale także na przykład spisu scenariuszy dostępnych na portalu polona.gov.pl. I wszystkie te obiekty mogą być łączone, integrowane w ramach kolekcji portalu Kronika. Portal Kronika świadczy nie tylko usługi dla obywateli poprzez ułatwienie dostępu, stanowią także istotne zabezpieczenie dla tych wszystkich systemów repozytoriów cyfrowych. Co to oznacza? Portal Kronika stanie się backupem dla tych wielkich repozytoriów, o których wcześniej mówiłem, ale także będzie umożliwiać zabezpieczenie danych małych muzeów lokalnych, miejskich, gminnych, szkolnych nawet, ale także kolekcjonerstwa prywatnego. Na festiwalu, na festiwalu Kultury Cyfrowej będziemy organizować warsztat, w którym pokażemy, w jaki sposób można przygotować swoją kolekcję do umieszczenia w projekcie Kronika. Umieszczenie w projekcie Kronika będzie, będzie bezpłatne i jednocześnie niepubliczne, czyli jeżeli instytucja nie będzie chciała tych informacji udostępniać, to będzie miała taką możliwość, a nie konieczność. Zapraszam Państwa do uczestnictwa w warsztacie projektu Kronika. I zapraszam Państwa już niedługo do wejścia na portal kronika.gov.pl i zobaczenia, jak rozwija się ten projekt. Dziękuję bardzo uprzejmie. My name is Anna Schiller and I have a pleasure to be your host uh, this evening. Um, we had an opportunity to learn about um, great projects. Um, I, uh, I know them um, very well because uh, we've been in touch with the creators for quite a while. Uh, and I'm really happy that uh, we managed to present it in this year's program as well. Uh, now I will introduce the, the speakers uh, to today, the artists, and uh, we will have a short Q&A. So, um, we are um, together with uh, Memory Morph, Małgorzata Uczyna and uh, Jacek Złoczowski. Um, they represent the project uh, TN CBH 2017-2018, um, uh, which they did in collaboration with the Bevois Gallery. Um, we are also with uh, Bolesław Michalski from Comixify AI, Grzegorz Zajączkowski representing the Kronika project, and um, Igor Harde and Rafał Basaj from Plate with Fire, who will talk Hello. about their game, Stargaze. Unfortunately, um, uh, Piotr Fedorczyk from uh, Storycopter couldn't be with us tonight. Uh, we had a pleasure to uh, learn about his project in the presentation. I highly encourage you to go on our website as well and to read about it. Uh, um, uh, also, you received uh, those who uh, subscribe our newsletter uh, received a PDF. Uh, uh, we created a special catalog that presents the best of Poland projects, and um, you can read about all the projects that were and will be presented uh, in this sessions. Okay, uh, we will start uh, the Q&A now, um, and maybe um, first question will go to um, Bolesław. Uh, but before I ask it, I will just remind you, uh, the audience, that you can also ask questions, not only me. Um, uh, regardless to the platform you uh, are watching the broadcast, uh, either uh, it is uh, YouTube, 
uh, Facebook or Zoom. You can ask questions to the creators. Uh, I will receive them and I will uh, ask them um, during this session. Uh, so I really encourage you to, um, to participate in our conversation. Okay, Bolesław, um, my first question goes to you. Um, could you tell us um, how does the development of AI solutions, in your opinion, uh, change the la landscape of, um, of the image processing apps? Um, from your experience yes. of, of, of Comixify AI, but I'm sure you uh, have a great knowledge about the um, uh, other um, other companies that develop similar solutions and also other companies that use AI in this realm. So um, wh what's your opinion on that? The key thing with AI is to try to use artificial intelligence uh, to limit the amount of work. That's basically what is our most important uh, task here at Comixify. We are trying to create tools that eventually will help artists to limit the amount of work they need to put in uh, their videos or their images. Simply, if you look at it from the perspective that based on about 100 images, we can create a style that will mimic the hand drawing images created. Let me just show you. This is based on 100 images. This style I'm presenting right now is based on 100 hand drawn images. So uh, with this done once, and with our artificial intelligence being able to uh, mimic the style and copy it and apply it to videos or to other images. This will simply help the artist in future and most of his future um, jobs in most of his future creation. And uh, this is what is probably the most important in, in the matter of um, AI, where it's responsible for making the workload uh, smaller and the work in general easier. This is what is our main goal and this is what we're trying to uh, to achieve. And this is also what uh, most of the companies are doing to help, uh, for example, with the rotoscopy, where you can simply select one thing and then the artificial intelligence will uh, do the rest for you, or with uh, presets, uh, AI-driven presets of uh, light or AI-driven presets of um, colorization or color correction. This is what AI is doing in terms of helping artists and helping working with the image. You can simply ask to ask AI to give you results of something that you will have to spend a lot of time, if done manually. Okay. Thank you. So uh, the workload, uh, the speed of work, um, does it also help Definitely. to create it faster? Okay. Well, if you look at it right now, I can do this. I'm using probably a, a mid-range graphic cards on my computer, and uh, we can get to 10, probably 15 uh, frames per second with uh, 70, 20 resolution, which is the HD resolution. Maybe not full HD or 4K, obviously, but then again, we're speaking about the mid-range graphic cards that cost less than probably 200, uh, 2,000 slots. So it's something that is very accessible, and we, you can see still me moving and even though it's uh, laggy and it's not very um it's not 25 30 fps it's uh, it's holding and it's, it's working quite well so imagine what we can do on the fully functioning uh, graphic cards that are there when we kind of reaching the live streaming with our handmade filters right so the speed of work is also increased by ai definitely good good question and, and yes true thank you so much Speaking about technology, uh, let's stick to this for a moment. Uh, I have a question to a memoir morph. Um, I'm wondering uh, why did you use and uh, did you choose to use Google Street View interface instead of, for example, using just you know a 3D model model or augmented reality app? Why Google Street? You understand? <laughs> uh, yes, well, um, the, the main uh, advantage of, of such tools is that they are uh, very, very common and uh, everybody is used to um, those types of, of platforms. So uh, we wanted, to, the goal was to um, 
to make it as as accessible as possible yes and to make the art uh, not only go outside the the gallery but uh, also in the virtual space go into the very common ground uh, not some very specific created only for the purpose of, of the gallery of, of exhibition uh, platform but uh, to blend it as much as possible with real life and in virtual uh, layer the the, the, the re normal life ordinary life is uh, using such platform as, as Google Google Street View in our case. And maybe on the, let's say, the level of the concept, there was this idea that uh, Google Street View is, is uh, somehow representing the reality for us. So we, most of us nowadays trust the vision that Google serves us, shows us on the maps, on the Street View, uh, and somehow we we take it for uh, for true. We take it for real for reality. When we travel somewhere, we we really uh, tend to rely on what Google tells us. Where should we go? How to find the way to some place? And when we see the place on the Google Street View, even if we were have never been there, we really try to believe. Or we we don't try. We believe that this is really the place that this we want to reality. visit. This is the re reality. So Google shows us a version of reality and we also wanted to play with these visions of reality so we wanted to make this uh, i don't know how to say this maybe it's like hacking something mm. okay it's not a hacker hacker's job but it's a kind of uh, playing with this expanding this the possibilities yeah. yes the first idea was how can we make uh, alternative visions vision of this place where the gallery is nowadays and how can we make it as accessible to the people as possible, as close to reality? If we would make um, an application on our website, which is completely independent and doesn't, it's not based on some com common device, some common platform, this would be just our vision. But we, we wanted to incorporate it into some, uh, let's say, external vision of reality. I think this is. <laughs> Thank you. Did you have a chance to talk with your audience about this? Uh, yes. Yes. What they, how they <laughs> feel about it? Did Did you, um, did you achieve your goal uh, in uh, in this project in terms of uh, making it as real as possible? Well, the, the first, the first, and so far the only, I think, impression we had, the, the feedback from the audience uh, was uh, during the exhibition. Uh, we were having a kind of artist talk also and uh, Q and A also in the gallery. It was after, uh, it was like the closing of the exhibition, 2017, mm -hmm. and. Uh, there were lots of questions, like some people were um, disappointed, some were not satisfied, some were fascinated that, oh, wow, this is a completely different idea. Uh, some people said uh, what we uh, tried to achieve um, is like destroying architecture idea, so they were not very uh, satisfied. and. Uh, what else? There were some. There were some discussions about. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> there were some discussions about uh, what is now, what was before, and. Um, well, our project <laughs> is uh, is it, it it was not replacing one building with another, so um, this was the main the main goal to to create more uh, more of a tension of, between those two buildings and architectures than than replacing one of another. Um, Probably, well, mostly um, the viewers were the, the citizens of Bielsko Biała, so people that know th this place very well. Uh, so also the, the feedback was that, that for them it was very, um, um, well, strange, but but yet interesting situation to see the same place that, that they know, that they see live or in, in the internet on Google Street View, um, transform in, in the way that, that we can see in, in our work. So yeah, it was an interesting feedback that we had. <laughs> but I think it was uh, also for them uh, easier to talk with new generations, right? Uh, using the uh, the interface they use and using the app they use and uh, tell them about the history of this place 
uh, viewing it online, right? Um, Maybe yes. Yeah, sure. mm -hmm. yeah. Well, the, the 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 common platform that is that is known by by different different um, age groups or different uh, social groups. This is also very important, where all those groups can can uh, meet or or use the same tool and without any introductions or or, or f f knowing firstly how to use some specific platform uh, and. Uh, this is, this was also our our goal to to present such uh, mm, different than, than than normal situation to to stimulate people to 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 check out what's why 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 is it why is it such right. such a way to to know maybe uh, more of a history about this place or or about the what was the difference between those two ideas about how to arrange this place where yes. where the synagogue and the gallery uh, and this could be uh, one possible outcome also to mm -hmm. cause to provoke some discussions maybe yeah. this already happened and possibly our uh, goal like for future is uh, we are really hoping that uh, uh, future uh, Google satellite views will let uh, users to scan this QR code from the gallery roof and uh, so that non-citizens of Bielsko who and would just be let's say the vi virtual passes by near <laughs> near the gallery building could check this out and, and check what what is the story about this would be maybe po one possible future outcome so far it's not possible because it's, the resolution is not so high yeah that's a great idea so imagined futures right exactly <laughs> <Something like that. laughs> thank you so much thank you um, um, Igor and Rafa uh, let's yeah. stick to technology still I have a question regarding VR um uh, how does vr limit your means of expression uh and means of storytelling and on the other hand um what does it have that the other mediums doesn't have don't have um mm -hmm. because you know intentionally intentionally you, you, you decided to use vr so i was wondering um uh, what were the pros and cons that you uh, were discussing about while designing on this particular medium? Yeah, that definitely there were both uh, pros and uh, cons of uh, going uh, with VR. Uh, VR is a very immersive uh, medium and this is what uh, drawn us uh, to virtual reality in the first place. So. Uh, in our game, you are, um, the, the game is set in, in space. You see the cosmos all around you and you, you see your, your hands and you are a kind of uh, fantasy scientist working with uh, different devices uh, which, uh, which uh, you can all touch and uh, adjust and uh, turn how we how we want and uh, and you also um, use them to explore the the imaginary world which is part uh, science fiction by part fantasy part fairy tale yeah so um, so this this was uh, this is a different experience than than what you can uh, just uh, experience on a, on a flat screen and with, with a limited view and without, uh, without being able to use your, your hands and, uh, and just look around being in, in the place. Uh, however, this presents also uh, certain limitations. For example, there is less uh, possibility for movie-like directing, uh, especially for, for storytelling. You, you cannot just uh, cut the image uh, from, from the player because the player will feel ill or will feel like uh, uh, something not unnatural happened. He must be inside this experience like in the real world he needs to be established. So um, drawing the player's attention to certain events and presenting them in an interesting uh, way is a, is a challenge. And uh, for example, we, we set this um, uh, 
who is set this game loop where, where you, are, you are a scientist doing scientific research and you use, uh, you're an astronomer using your telescope. You uh, use the telescope to focus on certain uh, events uh, which, uh, which you first have uh, uh, listed in your book of research. This, that this, these are the topics you want to explore. Then, then you make photos and also note down certain um, certain events uh, that you put in the book, and you have this layer of um, of uh, your your research book being completed and the ideas of your, your interpretations of things you see in the co in the cosmos for this telescope appear in the book, and this is one layer of storytelling. But we also have a mysterious narrator, which is voicing everything you do and commenting, reacting to things you do as a player. Uh, and this narrator gives sometimes uh, quite suspicious ideas what what could certain things mean, which is another layer of storytelling, which was uh, very helpful for us to go beyond uh, the, the limitations of being uh, always having the, the, the player uh, in, in, in a certain space with, with certain rules. Mm. Igor, uh, let's uh, l let's come back to this because I, I know that there are many many layers of this project and maybe yeah. let's uh, talk about them in the next round that we will do. Uh, I would like to uh, ask Grzegorz. Um, Grzegorz, you are responsible for a huge project. I Yes. Um, I really admire your energy, which I know um, uh, since we uh, started collaborating um, um, in, re uh, in the field of digital culture in many projects. Uh, and I always admired how much you do and how big projects you are responsible for. And Kronika is definitely one of them. Um, I have a question. Uh, what do you think is the role of state institutions um, uh, in promoting accessibility and uh, and um, cultural resources? Um, I think uh, I think that is fundamental role because the, we have many public institutions who has many uh, resources. We have many uh, we have many uh, uh, building many digital uh, libraries we building building uh, digital museums we building digital archives and uh, all of the, of the um, country is uh, collecting this promoting uh, and we uh, still looking for new possibility to find uh, other, uh, find people to find people find uh, methods to uh, Use uh, materials in, in normal education with uh, in uh, functions with uh, how to say uh, general. Uh, we have so many digital resources and we have so many people who want to uh, use it, but we have still problem because uh, we don't uh, people don't uh, know where this resource is. Mm -hmm. The role mm -hmm. of the country is uh, to try to find, uh, uh, to promote uh, these this, uh, libraries, these digital museums, and of course financing this oldest project because this is a fundamental problem. The, the museums, locals, uh, libraries uh, has a problem with getting money for this process, and this is one of the important role of the country in this process. Of course, financing and promoting of using uh, of this resource. And also, from what I understand, uh, listening mm -hmm. to you, teaching where to look for this information, right? Yeah, we, we must look for the last uh, six months. Uh, how many uh, the, the the statistics of National Library uh, in Poland? I think about System Polona is jumping because uh, normally uh, in, in this are in this time of uh, uh, lockdown. The use of all uh, li digital libraries is grow up, it, and and uh, of course this is uh, it, uh, this material is using in many uh, schools because it is re ready to use uh, educational materials 
who is uh, put in the in the normal lesson in normal schools. And I think this is uh, the main target of, of this uh, system for now. Grzegorz, uh, we have a question from the audience, so mm -hmm. uh, I will um, I will ask it now because I think it's important. Uh, the question is, um, what institutions can join the Kronika program? Can private institutions, associations, for example, photographers, uh, also share their collections via the Kronika portal? What is the formal path of including the association uh, Association's collection into the Kronika repository. Everybody is so everybody is invited. What institutions can private institutions also join? Not on the, was the uh, formal path. We invite everybody to use uh, Kronika system because in these days we we have a special workshop. Uh, including uh, private collectors. This is a very special group because so many people in Poland collecting so many things and in, in making this uh, digital copy of this collection. Uh, Kronika is prepared prepared to making uh, to connecting uh, so many not only institutions but also private people. Uh, that uh, we are preparing the system to uh, uh, to secure all uh, digital culture content in all the country, including museums and also private collection and private uh, and private uh, uh, and, and so many people who want to put and secure your uh, digital resource. Of course, we are in area of culture and in science. Okay, thank you, thank you. Um, there is also a question to Bolesław, uh, a question from the audience. I think it's a very important question, very interesting one. I, I'm also curious to uh, learn about it. Uh, how Comixify deals with copyrights issues on YouTube, of YouTube videos, for example? Uh, you mean that if someone is... Uh... Using Comix, using Comixify to change the video from YouTube, right? I, I guess that's the question. So basically what we're doing, we're providing the service. <clears throat> we, are, we can't be responsible for what the, the user will upload uh, and uh, change. This is not our role to uh, monitor what people are placing in our server. Obviously, we're filtering porn out, so you can't use anything that is improper on our uh, portals. But as long as you're using them, you're accepting the terms and regulations where we're giving you the ability to simply change the material you want. It's quite similar to any post-production software or any um, image edit software you can use, basically. You can upload whatever you want and you can work with whatever you want. So this is very similar here that we are providing the service, we're providing the tech. Uh, and in our terms and conditions, we are um, asking people to use only the materials that are being uh, that are theirs, that are that they have copyrights to. But and this is also why we're not using any filters that uh, we were unable to create uh, ourselves from, from open source materials. We're not copying someone else's copyrights to give them later. As you could see from my presentation, you can mimic any style. So we can simply ask our AI to watch um, old VHS Disney cassettes and then create the style. But we're not going to do it as long as we won't be approached by Disney. We won't mimic the Avengers or DC or Marvel copy style from comic books uh, without being uh, able to do it legally. So what we're building are the styles that we are able, and this is the one that we're giving out to people. And we're asking people to use only materials that they are owning. Thank you. Um, I also have a comment from our audience about Memory Morph. Um, I love Memory Morph. This is the comment. And the question is, are you planning to morph other historically interesting sites? Um, well, we've already started. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell us more about it, or is it a top secret project? Well, no, it's not so top secret, but it's not ready yet. So, however, we've... Uh, can I start? 
and you should... yeah sure well it's uh, it's not public the project is not published yet so so but Krakow. we started mm -hmm. another place was uh, Krakow and um, Krakow was um, uh, Jacek received a grant from uh, Krakow Municipal I guess, mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. for for doing this project so we started working together as a memory morph again and the idea was to um, more not building this time but to more people <laughs> and because uh, okay nowadays it's not maybe so visible but as probably you know uh, Krakow city center the market square is uh, one of the top attractions of the city and of Poland of course uh, thousands of tourists every year and uh, it uh, for several years or more than several years even it has become like a um, visiting a river of people you're the passes by there are so many tourists uh, trips uh, groups of tourists that uh, sometimes the people create the structure of the city so we decided to observe not the architecture this time but the city crowd as a kind of uh, um, vibrant multi-personal organism or something like this mm -hmm. So we um, started to cooperate again with the programmist. And maybe you want to tell more about the programming uh, and so. <laughs> well, the, the plan is to create it more, more of a um, more immersive um, VR um, f f um, environment, but more also kind of like, like in the project that we are showing here, uh, of, uh, uh, spherical panoramas with the video uh, with moving uh, and seeing uh, as Gosha said not not the, the the landmarks that we all know in the main uh, Krakow in the main uh, city square uh, but to see something that that we miss probably most of the time so uh, that is the, the people yes and usually we are angry about this too yeah. much people in the city so we decided to to transform it to kind of let's say attraction to to point out that the people create the city also and not uh, the landmarks yes and uh, the the program we created with the cooperation uh, in the cooperation with the programmist is based on the algorithm that removes all the um, uh, not non moving objects from each of the photograph it's based on the 360 panoramas and it records it it just uh, Yes, it records only moving objects. So these are mainly people, sometimes maybe, um, sometimes very rarely cars, but mostly people. And the result, we are about to finish by the end of uh, this year, uh, will be like virtual experience of the city created out of people, not the streets, buildings, etc., etc. Uh, so we invite you already <laughs> to mm -hmm. presentation of these projects and another project um, uh, of morphing place is uh, very fresh it's very new and it's um, mm, the prototype of the product project was created during the art house residency uh, led by uh, Adam Mickiewicz Institute during this summer it was an on online residency and we had the pleasure to cooperate with um, Sandra Gaudenzi, which is uh, which was a great mentor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> who was sorry? Who and, was a great mentor? Yeah, and in this project, um, we uh, our m main topic was the also prob well uh, very, very played with the, with with somewhat complicated history, which is the palace of of culture and science in, in Warsaw. So building that probably every Polish citizen knows, um, probably knows uh, more or less the history, uh, <laughs> the genesis of the building. So we wanted to um, to take this topic and to create. Um, the idea was to create um, a visions of the place uh, where this building is. Um, replaced by some other version other type of architecture that in this project is generated by by uh, machine learning algorithms that generate um uh, generate m new images non-existing non architectures that are being placed in this uh, in this um, uh, in, in, in this fragment of of the city so <laughs> those two projects are yet to be released so that's why we are um, <laughs> still working on it <laughs> yes
that's that's super interesting thank you for sharing this with thank us you. we will uh, look for more information on your websites uh, coming up soon hopefully um, I have a question to Rafael Basai um, about Stargaze uh, Stargaze is a game about restoration and rebuilding um, I think both very important in uh, the times of pandemics pandemic um, I have an impression that uh, they are more common in video games than in other mediums like film uh, you can agree or disagree with me but um, I'm wondering why if yes or if no what, what's what's your what's your thoughts about this yeah, definitely in video games it's way easier to create things than uh, in any other medium because you get the blocks from which you can build uh, you have simulation games you have adventure games uh, that often encompass this kind of uh, gameplay technique um, so that's that's very very true actually it's it, even because uh, video games are so immersive as a medium it's definitely easier to add that building mechanics to make them fun uh, for the player whereas in films uh, it would definitely be harder to make uh, a film or a TV series about building interesting to people because you are not physically involved in it. Uh, you just watch it from, you know, far away. Um, so in that sense, it, it's really, really true. And in Stargaze, um, it, it's less of building things, but more about restoring things. Um, mm -hmm. So on our planets in the game, you have all those creatures that live there and not all of them, you know, are happy or uh, live a life they could. So one of the um, things you do in the game is to actually help them while, out while doing your research, uh, which is kind of the compelling and wholesome part of the story. Thank you. Um... I'm, I was wondering about VR when I, I was listening to you and your presentation uh, before. Uh, in times of COVID, it's really hard to distribute VR and to present it on uh, festivals, games festivals and film festivals. Did you think about it? Did you consider um, this aspect of, of the project? Do you have any ideas how to cope with it? Well, um... Definitely, we didn't plan for COVID uh, when we started doing the game. Um, but um, there are ways to present VR games uh, in a 2D environment, uh, whether those are 360 videos uh, that are becoming more and more popular, uh, even through social media. Um, but also, you know, you don't need to have a VR headset to actually enjoy uh, VR or, let's say, 360 uh, degrees videos. Uh, it's definitely not as immersive as you would put a headset on, uh, but it's doable to showcase those games. However, uh, our game is created in a way that is very compelling to watch even in 2D uh, as a bystander watching someone playing the game, uh, which is um, obviously a huge benefit for us because it's easier for us to you know, tell the story of the game without people needing to actually put uh, VR headsets on. Thank you. Grzegorz, um, a question to you. Um, digital cultures is an international event. We have audiences from all around the world. And uh, I was wondering uh, if you could uh, s tell us uh, more about integration, the integration of Kronika with other uh, international repositories. Is it uh, yeah, yeah, the yeah. planet? Is it possible? Yeah, uh, this is important for, uh, for us because in the uh, beginning of planning of architecture of Project Kronika, we planning integration, of course, with the Europea, EU, project, of course. So this is a uh, most important uh, EU uh, place for uh, connecting so many uh, different materials. Of course, the second way to connect with uh, different uh, repositories is, of course, uh, we using uh, IIIF uh, format to presenting all the graphic materials and also video. This is new uh, in this project. And also, uh, we working on huge API uh, who is uh, 
uh, who is connecting to I think five type of different difference and uh, everybody from the world is invited to use this material of course on the creative commons and uh, this is but this is all because this is all the standards to connect uh, to, uh, to external systems this is the, the typical and modern uh, uh, solution for this okay thank you thank you so much um guys we are um past time past the time we should be wrapping up soon uh, i was wondering if you if you want to add anything to your presentations or do you want to announce anything um to our audiences at the moment is it anything you would like to tell the world and share, share the world with at the moment before we um we finish well, any news uh, you would like to announce during digital cultures for example the premieres upcoming premieres or i don't know some special features or uh, new markets that you will be available at we can offer uh, anyone who's watching us the free online uh, demo of our technology if you want to style transfer your video or if you want to rotoscopy it or use super resolution uh, all you need to do is go to our website and then on the top left corner there is a vfx platform uh, link where you can apply for a demo and we would be more than happy to give all the people that are here with us the access to the demo with 20,000 free frames uh, to have fun and to try our tech. Great, that's that's wonderful. Thank you, Boleswav. And yeah, on the, our side of, uh, sorry, <laughs> on our side of things, uh, Stargaze is coming really, really soon. Uh, we cannot state the date yet, unfortunately, but we promise you it won't be a long right. wait. Uh, the game will be available available on um, Oculus, HTC Vive, uh, on Steam, and Windows Mixed Realities. Uh, you can wishlist the game now, so if you're interested in the concept, we highly encourage you to, to wishlist the game and stay uh, on topic uh, with any kind of announcements we might have in the very near future. Thanks. Thank you. Well, I, I actually, um, I, I mean, uh, liberty to say that the premiere will happen already in November, uh, and um, and well, well, uh, well uh, before Cyberpunk, so there will be time to, to play before the the biggest premiere of November. So that, that, that's what I wanted to add to that. Right. We are very much looking forward to it. Grzegorz, um, Gosia, Jacek, anything to add? Yes, we have something to ask. Add. We do. Uh, well, I wanted to say that uh, the last question uh, was kind kind of uh, our made us to, to yeah. already to, as announcements. Uh, so, uh, well, we we hope the plan is to. Um, um, create everything uh, uh, to be seen in our website at the beginning of the next year. Um, usually we work and cooperate with galleries in such projects as, as, as it was also um, this time, but during the situation probably we will try to um, push everything into the electronic world and virtual environments. So probably the website will be the, uh, the, the main platform for us right now. Yes, and if you want to morph, if you want to morph someplace, see alternative visions of the places. Let us know. <laughs> yes. Great. Uh, Grzegorz. No, I only invite everybody to connect with us. All the contact is published on the website uh, kronika.gov.pl. Also, to find uh, all the Kronika team on the social network, on Twitter, on LinkedIn. Uh, everybody is uh, listed on this uh, web page. Thank you very much, and uh, I congratulate my colleague, colleagues for the very inspiring presentation for me, it's including especially uh, this first presentation book from, from I have a problem with speaking. A comic CP, yeah, I don't, I, don't, uh, I, I can speak. Comic CP, also. Comic CP. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you, Greg. There is a similar comment.
comment from our audience from Savia Norua. This is uh, a comment, not a question, just to say all these projects are really cool. Keep up your great work, guys. So I think this is a, a good summary of our conversation. Thank you so much for joining the, the, this Q&A um, and for this inspiring presentations. Again, I encourage everybody to uh, look on the website and to find the catalog uh, where all the Best of Poland presentations are gathered. This is something um, we would like to share with the world and, uh, um, and uh, we uh, encourage you to uh, check it out. Um, I also encourage everybody to stay with us today. Now we are all, we already started a performance in a in a video game uh, that's called Operation Jane Walk. We do it in cooperation with the Patch Lab Festival. Uh, so if you go on the website, check the program for today, and click on the link, you will be redirected to the uh, to the website where the performance is taking place. Uh, and then uh, the film program, um, I think a good um, proposition for the Friday evening, uh, still a lot of movies that are available on the Ninateka uh, website and uh, a new uh, uh, project uh, from the audio program of the soon that starts today uh, and premieres uh, today uh, at 9 p.m. So thank you so much. Uh, thank you for being with us and see you all very soon. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. <laughs>